everybody, this is Dustin over at Geekmatix, and today we are going to go over how to replace an SMC on a MacBook Air. Now we are going to go over how to replace it, not how to diagnose it, because that's an entire video in itself. Now before we get started, I would like to make a shout out to Justin from The Art of Repair, uh, helping me get the quality of the video set up as good as possible to 1080p. I know they've been lacking, and so I reached out to him and he helped me get it all set up, so thank you a bunch. Um, also, I know the audio is crap, that's, be, that's my fault, I lost the little adapter for my microphone that I bought, so I have to buy a new one, that'll be in a few days hopefully, so the videos will be better from there. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started on replacing this SMC. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the SMC off the board that we're working on, and what I'm going to use here is one of these Quan Lee hooks, and what I'm going to do is first bring with my heat gun up high to heat the entire area of the board, okay, to kind of heat the board evenly. And then I'm going to come in real close on the chip, and I'm going to nudge it with my Quan Lee. And as soon as it moves back and forth with that surface tension, that tells me, hey, the chip is ready to be picked up off the board, and then I'm going to kind of hook it right up and lift it over, okay? So let's get started. And try not to shake you guys too much because the camera's right there. And again, kind of starting all the way up here to really just evenly heat that board. And then I'm going to gradually bring her down. Wow, I'm messing up here. Lift. Oh, I made a mess. I have made a mess. I let that chip land where it shouldn't have. I did not hook properly. So let's see what damage we did. Let's see. Come in with our microscope here. Oh, not too bad, actually. Can you guys see that clearly? Yeah. And just uh, definitely noob stuff right there, but um, just kind of touched right here. None of the resistors or capacitors or anything got touched, which is good to go. Awesome. Now on to the next step. Get this old SMC out of here. Boop. All right, now we're going to go ahead and clean up these pads. Mm -mm. Alright, and we'll just switch you guys over to the scope only. Get some flux on here. Turn on the iron. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to wick the pads. And I do that on MacBooks because it makes the new chips sit ever so beautifully on there when we're reballing. Where are my clips? Here they are. Just kind of going to wait for everything to get hot there. There we go. Oh, uh, man. Come on. Go back to where you were. Stop being stubborn. There we go. Wow, all over the place tonight. This is what happens without sleep. There we go. I think I got it that time. Maybe. Wow, I think this is the longest it's ever taken me to whip this. Here. All right, there we go. Finally. Good to go. One more right there. Come on. Don't be stubborn. Get out of there. Boop. Oh, look beautifully. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my flux just because I don't like to com combine all of the flux on top of the flux because then you get a real mess. And the only way out of that is an ultrasonic bath. So let's see. Clean all this up here. And makes me more of a mess. It gets worse. As I used to tell my mom, as I was cleaning my room, it will get worse before it gets better. But it will get better. I promise you. 
Get some ISO in here to clean that mess up. I like to clean the uh, the flux off the board before, or as much access off the board as before I introduce the ISO, because I feel like if you introduce the ISO first, before you clean up the massive mess of flux, then it just kind of spreads and it becomes out of control. And again, the only way out of that is an ultrasonic to make the board look beautiful again. And I think I've already spread it too wide. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to have to wick again because I've got one pad that I missed. If you guys don't see it, I will point it out to you. This one here. And honestly, that one could be done. Read these, these two. So this time, just a little bit of flux. Boop, 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 right around there. And a little piece of wick. And again, just to make it everything perfectly flat, I don't do this on iPhones because iPhones are more fragile. They're crybabies. Their pads tear so much easier. Right, come on, get out of there. Uh, good enough. All right. So again, we'll clean before the ISO, again, to kind of wipe off the access. And then, then we'll introduce the ISO and kind of clean up the rest. All right, so now the board is ready for the new SMC. So we'll put that aside and grab our donor board. I just want to show you this. When you buy donor boards from AliExpress, or I guess anywhere from China, this is the kind of quality you get. Look. They have holes in the board. Everything is removed. They, they left the SMC intact, thankfully. The only reason I got them. All right, now to remove the SMC from the donor. Switch you guys back to the scope only. There we go. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is switch out my head here. Uh, I guess I could do this with the big head too. I'm going to remove the plastic, but I use a much lower heat for that. And again, same kind of process, just heating the top general area of the board, a little less careful because I don't care about the donor, but I do care about the SMC. And now I'm at, I'm at like a real low heat, 200 Celsius or so, which is very low for mine, just to kind of pick this stuff off. And again, you would want to be very, very careful not to scrape into the board. And really, once it gets to that certain temperature, it just comes off in one piece, really. Weezers that look better, but I don't necessarily care about is what I'm on the mood to look for. Clean them all now. See, as they start to kind of, as it, as it gets hotter, it, they lift off in one piece. And again, if this wasn't a donor, I'd be much more careful about actually peeling this off. I don't like to leave marks like this on the board if I can help it. I don't like to leave marks like this next to the holes like this, you know, that. Beautiful. All right. Now, let's see if I can do it a little better this time on this SMC. It's going to be a little lower light because I moved my light out of the way so I can maybe pull the donut a little better.
And it's taking a little longer because the other one was previously revolved. And this is factory. Oh. Not to mention I'm hitting it with that low, much lower heat. That won't melt anything. There we go, it's moving. Lift right off, perfect. That's what I was looking for the first time, but it doesn't always happen. All right, now to the reballing action. Let's put that somewhere to cool. All right, so let's see if my iron will take care of that little leftovers that we have. Where is my flux? Here it is. All right, so the next step is we're going to add some solder to the chip, clean it up a little bit here. Access, oh, whatever you want to call that junk. So you want to get these oxidized pads, make sure, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. These pads that are kind of grayed out. Uh, are you in focus? There we go. And if they're being stubborn like that, the couple of these that we have here are, then we're going to go back over them with a smaller iron just to make sure they respond properly. All right, let's grab our, I think the micro pencil is what's plugged in. So that's what we'll be using. And you'll see, I'll just go over each one and they will come right back to life just like that. Excuse me. And just make sure each one they're not oxidized. That way when we go to reball it, just like I went over in my last video on the CD3215s, that they all accept the new solder. Beautiful. I think that's all of them. Ooh, one more. Right there. Awesome. And now I'm going to go wick, go through and wick it. Wicked, wicked, wicked. There we go. All right. Here, let me zoom out for you guys so you can see the whole chip. And I might need a little bit more flux. We're going to see if we can get away with it. I think we're going to get away with it. Yes, we are. Perfect. All right, they're all clean. I probably missed one or two, as I always do. That's going to be good enough. All right. Next up here is to clean the work area and the chip itself. I clean the work area first, let the chip cool in my tweezers, as you can, I guess, not see. But they're resting my tweezers right now, or the chip is cooling a little bit. Beautiful. Set this back down here. I'm going to try to clean all the access off first. Not that it really matters too much on the IC itself. That's mainly on the board that I try to do that on. Oh man, all over the place today. I blame the bend in my tweezers. Not me, my clumsiness. It's not what it is. Don't mock me. Oh man, flipping the sucker everywhere tonight. Once again with my dry side. Awesome. 
So that SMC will clean it up just a tad more with the ISO and should be ready for the reballing action that we're about to have. All right, so now to get the stencil. All right, guys, before I get started, I just want to let you know what stencil I use. is the one, it's this little tiny one here that I bought from store.rossmangroup.com. Don't delay, buy today. I think that's what he says. So I'm going to be doing it a little differently. I'm going to tape this thing down. I just feel like it's easier to tape it on top of the chip in the right position than hold it while I'm trying to heat. I know not everybody does that, but I just find it for me, it's easier, so that's what I'm going to do, and let's get started on that. Switch you guys over to scope, here we go, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to align or check the orientation here, looks like it's going this way, nope, that's not right. One of these ways, maybe this way, there we go. All right, beautiful. I'm gonna get some tape here, tape it down. Probably not even the right tape that I should be using, but it works, so hmm, tape's tape. What I'm gonna do is align, it might be easier to tape just the, uh, the stencil first and then press down on the mat. There we go. I try to have the IC as perfectly straight as possible, makes this easier. Uh, don't stick to me, tape stick to the mat. All right, that looks really good right there. And I'll press down on this side of the tape to kind of hold it to the mat, stick it to the mat, and let it go up a little bit. And grab another piece of tape. And same type of thing. We're going to align it. Make sure it's aligned properly. And she is. Beautiful. Make sure both sides of the tape are down. And just like that, I don't have to hold the stencil anymore. I'm going to get a glove, though, because I'm going to be working with that 183 leaded solder paste. So that's not good for me. So I'm going to protect myself. right tip on my heat gun. There we go. And again, I'm using 183 solder paste. So on my heat gun, I'm going to use what I know will melt 183 and just above it and a low airflow. That way not to bend my stencil. All right. And we're just gonna smear the solder paste on the stencil. Not too hard as we don't wanna move the stencil or the chip underneath. Try to cover each one fully. I think we got it there. Beautiful. And clean her off with our other fingers. Now on this one, since I have the tape, I do go back around and clean the extra, this stuff here around the tape. Oop, you see, I use my ungloved hand, not smart, to try to get these, this solder paste out of here so it doesn't go into there. I think that should be good enough. And right, we're going to go in with our hot air. And I am still going to hold down with my tweezers just a little bit. Again, try to heat the whole area. And then we're going to come in down here. And 
we're getting close. Here we come. Beautiful. Everything's looking good so far. Awesome. That looks like it's going to be a good reball. Let that cool off for a second. Start peeling up the tape. Over there, stay there. And now we're gonna poke this SMC out, SMC out of our stencil. Beautiful. Now it looks like it's gonna be good. So what next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of flux and I'm gonna reflow it. Make sure all those balls are even. Beautiful. All right, that looks like it's ready to go onto the board. You guys see that? I'm just trying to make it as clear as possible for you guys, but that is perfect. Or as close as I will ever be to perfect anyway. And the next thing is gonna let that cool off for a second, put it off to the side, and then we'll go ahead and put her on to the new board. Or to the new board. To the board that we're working on, anyway. Okay, guys, so now the next step here is now that we got the board on under the scope, is to add just the right amount of flux. Oops, see how dirty that is? That gets. I'm going to clean that. Where is my paper towel? Mm -mm -mm. All right, there we go. Just gonna add just the right amount of flux here. Not too much. Not too, not too little. And then what I'm going to do is smear it around. Just like that. Just enough. Perfect. Awesome. That way we're not making too big of a mess. Now we're going to put the SMC on the board. Make sure we have the orientation correct. And just like that. Beautiful. All right, guys. So first I'm going to come in here again, very, very high up. And not only this time, not only to, to make sure the board's heated evenly, but simply to, to make sure that the, the chip doesn't fly away from me. And what you're going to notice is, let me switch you over to both, is that I am not only going to use my scope here, I'm going to get rid of my scope halfway through. I'm just using my scope in the first half to make sure that the chip ju doesn't jump away from me and it seats properly. Alright guys, so I just realized that I had the chip aligned the wrong way, so good thing I caught that and I've got it aligned properly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, that I've got the chip seated, I'm going to go ahead and come in with my hot air. I'm going to come in pretty high, just again, to heat the board evenly. And then I want to, I want to wait until I start seeing the flux that I've placed below the chip and around the chip to kind of bubble up or flux a little bit or kind of melt. And I'm going to start coming in. And essentially, I'm just waiting to see either a little jump or just as long as I know that the chip is a, soldered just a little bit. And then I can come in. I think it's going to be good. Now, I didn't see a jump, but it should be good enough where that solder is melted. And then I'm going to come move my microscope, extend you guys to hand camera only. And then I'm going to come in just above. And I'm going to notch her. Make, just kind of notch her with my tweezers. Make sure that surface tension kicks in, and it does. Knock a couple of times, and it's good. Beautiful. That SMC is on there. And now we'll just wait for the board to cool. 
and then we will test her and make sure that that sucker turns on. All right, guys, so the board is cooled, and now we're going to plug her in and see if she turns on. First, we'll see if we have fan spin. Green light, good. Orange light, good. Uh, yeah, you guys saw it, fan spin, good. And now we shall hope we get a question mark as there's no drive plugged into the computer. Any day now, MacBook. Maybe. Did I fix it or not? There it is. Beautiful. And that is a working MacBook. All right. All right, guys, so that's essentially how you replace an SMC on a MacBook Air. Or it's very similar on just about every other MacBook. But uh, as always, I hope you learned something, and have a good day.